and welcome. Today we are going to be painting your portrait. Okay? Now have you ever had your face painted before? So this is brand new for you. Not to worry at all. As you can see, I've got my easel set up and my canvas. And first we're going to just pick out some colours to use. I don't always like to use conventional colours. I like to keep things different. So how about we just start by looking through my oils and selecting which colours suit your aura. Just to give you an overview of the colours we have to choose from and anything that might catch your eye. Yeah, we've got lots of nice greens because that's the main colour I like to use. Yeah, you've spotted them, have you? <laughs> yeah, and then some bold ones and I like to mix a lot of shades myself, you know, so the most painters. It's just easier to have the primaries but you know, and then a bit of turpentine here will thin the paint a little bit and make it a lot more blendable. So I saw that you were eyeing the greens quite furtively. So let's choose one of them to use today. So to begin we've got sap green, which is kind of a mossy grass finish as you can see. It kind of blends well with the trees in the background, that's exactly why I chose this colour for my landscape painting coming up. So there we've got sap green. Next we've got more of an evergreen finish. This one is called Viridian Hue. It's quite beautiful. As you can compare to the background, it's a little bit more bright maybe more of a summer colour. It doesn't really blend with the trees today because it's quite an overcast day. If the sun was shining, it would probably look like a close match. Viridian hue. Viridian hue. I think that's kind of a powerful one that would look really good on a portrait. The final green I want to show you today is called Tierra Bird. And it's really beautiful, natural. It kind of gives a spring green vibe. You can see how that blends nicely with our landscape today. I'm a huge fan. What do you think of this one? You think you prefer this one? To compare, they are quite different. So you've selected the green. How about we look at something a little bit warmer toned? I have some browns here. This one is Burnt Sienna, a classic used in oils. Use this shade in oils, watercolours, and acrylic my whole life. You can see it's quite warm, summery, could really add dimension, definition to the face. So one I'd recommend, I should tell you, we have a darker brown, Burnt Umber. Now this one gives more of a tree bark vibe. You can see it kind of matches the tone of the landscape again, um, because wherever there's green there's usually brown. So that was the idea behind this purchase. So we could use this to add, you know, a real dimension to the angles of the face. Um, so it's up to you. Do these appeal? Do you want some of this? A warm tone brown. Perfect. Now I've got some bright, 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 bright colours to choose next, okay? First we have chrome yellow hue. As you can see, it's kind of a bright lemon yellow kind of vibe. Really beautiful and loud. 
probably blend quite nicely with the burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. But also, we do have an orange, cadmium orange hue. Again, it's a very loud and bright colour. It may be representative of your personality, it's for you to decide. And the final from the brights is this permanent alizarin crimson. I personally love crimson in an oil. I think it's really beautiful and it adds a lot of dimension. So you can see there that they're both kind of of the same hue, the same tone. So it's up to you if any of those appeal. This one does. Okay. For those that feel they have a lighter, bright aura, this is usually a winner. Pale Rose Blush. As you can see, it's kind of a peach, peach, peach tone. I think it's beautiful. I think it would be something I'd use on myself, but this is your portrait. And you've kind of said brighter is what's suiting you. And if blue is your colour, we've got Prussian blue here, which is nice and navy. Bright, kind of night sky blue, if you like. Final four colours, we've got cobalt blue hue. She's a softer blue, more of a summer sky kind of blue. It's really, really pretty. And then just to add definition, we also have lamp black. And I have a huge titanium white because you can never get enough white, so we'll definitely have to blend some. So yeah, we've got quite a few colours there to choose from. So let's work on blending those up. A nice clean palette. I will start with the beautiful evergreen shade that you spotted and we just want to put a little dab on the palette. We can get a little bit more if we need it because I, I can always tell until I begin what I need most of. So yeah it's just a teeny tiny dot. That'll be plenty. And then we'll go with the burnt sienna and yeah just put a bit of that in there. It's such a powerful shade that you don't actually need to have loads and loads but you know it's going to be one of the main things we spot in the painting ah the nice lemon yellow and orange what do you think yellow for sure no problem with that we can definitely go yellow oh and you want orange as well well, who am I to say no? There's no harm in that. They go really nicely together as well. I bet we can make some really nice sunset style shades out of that. I would really love that. Of course we can go for this blue. It's kind of like a cerulean blue, don't you think? Really, really nice. And it's, it's really pretty. It suits your aura really well. Like I said, I do just need to get... A little bit of black and a little bit of white just to help mix and blend and are you okay if I show you the blend before we actually start the painting I can just blend them on a scrap piece of um, oil paper and show you what you can expect yeah of course I'm just gonna put a drop of turpentine water onto each blob so bear with me a second it's just so that I always have something to water it down with right then and right there it's much easier for me that way perfect that will do nicely let me just blend that in a little bit to these two to see if it looks good okay so let's just see how these look on the canvas see how bold that yellow is so let me just add that little bit yeah beautiful isn't it there's nothing more beautiful than oils is there 
Let's add some orange straight in there and just let's see what blend we can make. Wow. When those two blend together, it is like a perfect sunset, isn't it? And then a little bit bolder on top just to show you how deep and vibrant that orange is. We can always add little bits of white if we want to make things blend a little bit more, a little bit more subtle, a bit more faded. You can see here, I'll just add some. And see how that blends the colours out rather than dims them. It kind of just makes them less, less exuberant. I'm just blending a little bit. I just want to check any hidden colours that they might mix together and create that I want to be aware of. I always do little test sheets like this just to make sure I know what I'm working with. We're going straight in with the green. I'm starting to absolutely love the contrast between this green and orange. Look how gorgeous that is. Wow. That is just so inviting. You've made a fantastic selection here. Yeah, the contrast with the orange and the yellow really, really, really catches the eye. And then a little bit of white to just show you how this can kind of turn turquoise. Isn't that just the most stunning colour? That's the kind of colour I want for my living room wall. <laughs> Let's go straight in with the blue. And the blend between the green and the blue is really beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I love that. And then there's some white to just see how it can lighten up. Yeah. So you can see the contrast is very harsh from our bold colours above. But it's kind of a good clash. And it'll be, it'll be a good way of trying to show definition. Ah, a nice sea green is coming out in the middle. Obviously we're mixing two primary colours in yellow and blue. And a beautiful summer green is coming out. This is exactly the kind of thing that I like see when I do my mix. Okay, there we go. I've got some burnt sienna on here. And we're mixing in some orange just to see how warm we can really make it. And it is very warm, but again, it just seems to blend beautifully. And we can obviously lighten it up as well with a bit of white to just create a little bit of softness around the features. I'm a huge fan of this selection. Well done again. If it was me, I'd have been swayed by the pinks and the reds and things like that. But you knew what you wanted. Wow, the contrast. Let me just try some different strokes and shapes and see what we can make of it. And here I am with my black, just throwing it over the top of the colour to see how it looks. I want to see the bold contrast and the marks we can make with it. Maybe your most defined feature, like your eyes, we can use black and white to just overpower the colour. Wow, look at that close up. Isn't that just stunning? And the way it just fades into a nice, simple, pale green. Let's add some white. Or bluey turquoise shade. So you can really create all sorts of effects with a brush and here I am just testing. Testing the limits of sort of thicker brushes. Of course I do have detailed brushes. And the blue and green are just blending beautifully. I don't know if this will be a good one for the eyes. We can use this for the eyes. It doesn't have to be in the same colour but the blend is just so eye-catching. I think these are the most eye-catching colours in your palette today, to be honest. It's really beautiful. I love it. Are you comfortable? Ready for me to begin? Good. My canvas is just here. You can't see it, but hopefully you can sense it. I'm going to just start going in with brush strokes. I have no interest in sketching first. 
I just want to get in there with these bold, bold colours to start kind of lining. Yes, lining. I'm loving the selection that you've made. I think it really is a vibrant representative of yourself. I tend to, tend to stick to the softer tones when painting or drawing myself, but you have to respect your bravery. The day has taken a turn, but we're not going to let that stop us. Adding more tips to my oils all the time. Got my Prussian blue here and I'm going to use that to kind of just draw around the edges of your eyes. It doesn't have to be a perfect colour match. Remember this is just impressionism pretty much. Are you a fan of Monet and Van Gogh or such? Mm -hmm. Of course. I went to see the um, exhibit, they're all around the country and probably the world, but it was in Edinburgh. I went to see the Van Gogh exhibit where he kind of projects his paintings around the room and it's really lovely. And they tell you about his life and all that jazz. Surely the most well-known painter. So this evergreen you chose is perfect for lining the contours of the cheeks because it just it just looks so good next to the Prussian blue. Mm, it's a really good definition adder, you get me? Do you think you'd ever be interested in letting me sketch you? I'm not actually putting paint on the face, I'm just kind of lining it up. Yeah. You should definitely consider it. Yeah. It's really relaxing just sitting there and having yourself sketched. Give it a chance. So I'm going to do a landscape soon. The landscape just behind us actually. There's not much to see other than trees, but the trees mean a lot to me and they keep me calm through the day. Just so I want to remember them because I have to leave here soon and travel the world and see what other views there are. So I kind of want to remember this beautiful calming landscape that was my home for years through hard times like Covid and you know that 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 kind of unsure time that we all had you know anyway I'm gonna use the black to just dab at the eye maybe I'll get a finer brush actually I've got a finer brush here and I'm just gonna line the eyes just add a tiny bit of definition. And lashes. I'm going to mix up the Prussian blue and a little bit of black to make that tone deeper. But yeah, we want to stick to the colours, otherwise we'll start to worry that, you know, obviously the skin tone isn't correct. It's an interpretation of your aura, so it's not meant to be. I don't want people to question it, you know? Okay, let me just take a close look at your lash line. So it's kind of sloping. Mm -hmm. So do you think you'd be interested in watching me paint the landscape? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it would go down nicely. Um, it's fun for me, you know, I like to entertain, yes, but also entertaining myself is important. So as we move down the face, we're going to move into this burnt sienna shade that you selected, okay? 
I'm going to use it to line the mouth, the contours of the mouth, that sort of thing. Because you seem very open and light and chatty and the warmest colour in our range should really represent that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to use the black mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna just so I can add those fine lines, those fine lines to the lips. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a really good way of getting that definition added. Oh, I just heard a bird flapping its wings. I'm sure you also did. to start a chorus. So it's time to use this lemon yellow. And it's getting a bit mixed up with the brown but that's fine. Oil paint always goes a long way. And I'm just going to start to fill in very lightly those contours of the lips just with a few dashes of yellow. It's very bold in contrast to the burnt sienna so I don't want to go in too bold with it. I want it to be kind of a highlight of the painting. Maybe I'll add a little bit of yellow to your irises to show that little flash of intuition, you know? Yeah, I just... Obviously you don't have yellow eyes, I'm aware, but it's more of an interpretation of just how you think, you know? So I'm just going to add that now in a little flick. I love that. So we've got the main contours of the face. I think I'm just going to do a little bit of blending with a bigger brush, more volume, and just really get this evergreen mixed in with some white and just sort of filling any gaps there. And that's so we can make sure all of the canvas is completely covered. We can go in with the detail afterwards. I like to always go in a little bit later with my black, my black lampshade and, you know, add those finer points of the face. Mm. Oil paint takes days to dry if you weren't aware. Yes, so you can always go in and add detail a bit later. And that's something I love about oils. The downside is that it takes several days to dry, <laughs> so therefore you have to have it kind of smelling out your apartment. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking this yellow, mixing it with the evergreen here, and it's making a more pale green shade. Can you see that there? And I'm just using that to fill in the contours underneath your eyes and it's looking really good. It's making you look really artsy and fabulous. I'm loving it. Always just adding that bit more touch to make the paint go farther. I mean, it does thin the paint quite a lot, but um, I couldn't use oils without a little bit of thinner um, to give it that chance to really blend. I used to work in acrylic most prominently, acrylic paint, because it was cheaper and the schools obviously could afford it more, but it is, while it is good, it dries in an instant, whereas oil obviously doesn't. So around the hairline I'm going to use this orange shade and just kind of create a warmth. Something I really see about your face is a warm light. Mm -hmm. Would you say you've got a warm personality, a warm tone? Yeah. Completely. I'd say myself, I'd probably... <laughs> I prefer the cooler shades because they speak to me. Um, I'm a shyer person and I'm quiet, so... As a result, I probably have <laughs> a less warm hue about me. <laughs> We are very much nearly there. 
I think I will just get my fine line paintbrush. This one. Apology for the bird in the background, just having fun. And I am just gonna add the tiniest bit of detail. So maybe just a few dots. I see you've got a beauty mark there. And I'm just gonna add that in because it's important to make sure it's represented. I have a lot of um, beauty marks, so I would always appreciate them being in the portrait. And you do have a shadow casting, just down there slightly. I'd really like to show that. This really shows the vibrant person within, and I'm happy with it. I hope you'll be happy with it as well. I can't show you till it's dry, of course, so it'll be a couple of days, but I'm sure you don't mind waiting. So it's just finishing touches now. Yeah, I think we'll go... Hmm, we'll just add this shadow on the chin and do a bit of a blend with my big brush. Just some wide strokes to give it a good blend. And I think that's us. I'm really happy with it. Can I just compare? Just stay still. Hmm. It really does perfectly encapsulate the warmth, the vibrance of your face. I'm really happy with it. It is going to take a while to dry and maybe I'll add some finer details in my own time. I have pretty much memorised your face now. I hope you enjoyed our first session. There'll be many more to go and in a couple of days I'll catch up.